Cinderella, my perfect wedding. Cinderella's dreams were coming true at last. With the help of her mouse friends, she had managed to race down the stairs just in time to let the Grand Duke place the glass slipper on her foot. Now she and the prince were going to be married and their brand new life together, filled with happiness, would soon begin. But first, there was a wedding to plan. Cinderella didn't have the faintest idea where to begin. Prudence, who ran the castle household for the king, was happy to take charge. She sat with Cinderella and read of a long list of things that needed to be done for the wedding. Uh, excuse me, Prudence, Cinderella said as soon as Prudence had paused for a moment. But couldn't the prince and I just have a simple wedding? Prudence frowned. Cinderella, now that you are going to be a princess, you must start thinking big. Later on, the royal dressmaker arrived with several wedding gowns. The first gown was covered with bows and sashes. The guests will mistake me for a present, cried Cinderella. You look just like a princess, Prudence said. Do you think you could design something plainer? Cinderella asked. No, Prudence exclaimed. Plain and princess do not go together. The next day, Prudence and Cinderella visited the castle's royal florist shop. The royal florist greeted them with a bush. At least, Cinder Cinderella thought it looked like one. This is lovely, she said, but do you have something a bit smaller? It's perfect. Prudence said. You just have to know how to carry it. She held the flowers out in front of her and was stung by a bee. That afternoon, the mice found Cinderella all by herself in the garden. Where's Bossy Lady? asked Gus. Poor Prudence, replied Cinderella. She got quite a nasty sting from that bee. The royal physician says she must stay in bed for the rest of the day. But what about the wedding plans? Jacques asked. I'll just have to take care of it of them myself, Cinderella declared. Now, what should I do first? Who's a coming, Cinderella? wondered Jacques. The guest list. Good idea, Jacques. Let's see. Well, of course, all of you are invited. Cinderella replied, and my fairy godmother. Actually, I wish she were here right now. And almost as fast as Cinderella wished it, her fairy godmother appeared. After giving Cinderella a big hug, she said, I just love weddings. The beautiful gown, the towering cake, the romantic music. And I'm sure everything you've picked out is just lovely. Cinderella admitted she hadn't actually picked out anything yet. And when is the wedding, dear? asked the fairy godmother. Gus counted on his fingers. Tomorrow, he announced. Oh my goodness, child, cried the fairy godmother. Then we'd better get started. Lots to do, Jacques added. He and Gus unfurled Prudence's list for the fairy godmother to see. We'll plan an absolutely magical wedding for you, dear. The fairy godmother gushed. Now let's begin with the dress. With a wave of the fairy godmother's wand, Cinderella was instantly adorned in an elegant white gown 
but her fairy godmother had forgotten the veil. It's beautiful, Cinderella said, but don't you think it needs... But the fairy godmother wasn't listening. She had already moved on to the next item. Invitations, she declared. In the blink of an eye, hundreds of lovely cards sat in stacks around the room. Now we shall prepare the feast and make the cake, the fairy godmother announced. I want everything to be perfect. Cinderella changed back into her blue dress and followed the fairy godmother to the royal kitchen. Meanwhile, the mice stayed behind, picking up where the fairy godmother had left off. Mary, Susie and Perla lifted some scissors and cut a small piece of fabric from the long train of Cinderella's wedding gown. Then they threaded needles, pulled out a box of tiny pearls and went to work on a veil. Invitations, Jacques announced. Instantly, the mice lined up and each received an armload of cards to deliver throughout the kingdom. They didn't get very far before their plans were spoiled by Pom Pom, the castle cat. Phew! Close call! cried Jacques as he and Gus raced away from Pom Pom and caught up with Cinderella in the castle kitchen. And now for the best part, the fairy godmother announced. Cinderella watched as her fairy godmother squeezed her eyes, shut in concentration. Then, with one grand sweep of her wand, the fairy godmother created the biggest, fanciest cake Cinderella had ever seen. What do you think? the fairy godmother asked. Cinderella, trying to hide her disappointment, said evenly, uh, Prudence will love it. And speaking of prudence, I really should go see how she's feeling. Poor child, said the fairy godmother after Cinderella had left. I think all these wedding plans are too much for her. Jacques and Gus tugged at the fairy godmother's sleeve. Cinderella likes smaller things, Jacques told her. Gus pointed proudly to himself, like mice. All at once, the fairy godmother understood. Later, in Cinderella's chamber, the fairy godmother took Cinderella's hands. I'm afraid I may have gotten a bit carried away, my dear, the fairy godmother confessed. Now, tell me, child, what would the wedding of your dreams be like? After listening to Cinderella, the fairy godmother began to perform her magic. With a wave of her wand, the hundreds of tiny pearls the mice were stitching onto Cinderella's veil were sewn into place. Then she sent the invitation out the window to their destinations. Now, let's cut that cake down to size, the fairy godmother said with a twinkle in her eye. But before the two departed the kitchen, Cinderella stopped and looked tenderly at the kind-hearted mice. Thank you, my little friends, she said gratefully. The next day, Cinderella looked lovely in her simple white gown, veil and gloves. In her hand, she carried a small bouquet of garden flowers that the mice had gathered for her. But just as the king was about to escort her down the aisle, Cinderella looked down and gave a little cry of surprise. The fairy godmother followed the bride's gaze. Good heavens, child, she exclaimed. You can't get married in your bare feet. She waved her wand and two glass slippers peeked out from beneath Cinderella's gown. After the ceremony, 
The prince and Cinderella shared a joyous celebration with their guests. It was the most wonderful wedding anyone in the kingdom could even remember. Even Prudence was pleased. However did you manage all of this? The prince asked his new princess. Cinderella smiled and said, With friends by your side, anything is possible. If you like this video, please leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe.